Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, vinyl record variants. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check all those out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for our merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music weekly playlist that we put together, and also the uh, Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a little thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So this is something I feel like has really kind of popped up quite pretty pretty regularly over the last couple of years you know whether or not we've kind of reached a point where we've got you know just too many variants of all these different albums and i feel like it's something that uh really kind of peaked within the last you know week or so when taylor swift released her new album midnights and uh, we had a conversation on the vinyl that facebook group about all the different variants that are available for it. and there were claims not only in not only in our facebook group but i saw in all other social media you know uh, facebook groups and on instagram where people were talking about oh well you know there's 20 to 25 different variants of this album when in reality there's only five uh, vinyl variants it's just the standard what is a moon uh, moon glow or moon moonlight blue or something like that i'm over the titled the the standard kind of standard uh, version of that album but and then there's so there's that one then there's three other variants that were available through her website and those same variants were available through your local record store and walmart or wherever you get them and then there was a fifth version which was the target exclusive which is i think a lavender kind of color but i, I feel like the taylor swift uh release is something a little bit different because those at least the the four standard variants form a clock which i think is kind of you know it's one of those novelty kind of quirky things that uh i i've seen kind of pop up with vinyl releases over the last you know couple of decades but i feel like that's kind of a set aside because I, I feel like taylor swift you know whenever she does anything there's always a big segment of the music listening population that uh, always kind of goes out and kind of attacks her for what she does and but, you know, like I said, there's only five variants of that. But I've seen other al albums come out this year, uh, you know, Ghosts and Pierre for one, that has over 30 variants. I, I feel like I haven't really heard anyone really talk about. Or the fact that uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers released two albums this year, and each one of them have, you know, 25 plus variants. So I, I feel like there's there, there's a line. I, I think there's a line somewhere that uh, where most people feel kind of comfortable with, with variants. You know, I think once, at least me personally, I, the way I look at it is once you get above, say, five, six, seven variants, you know, I, I know when, uh, I, when Taylor Swift released Folklore a couple of years back, and I think there was like 10 variants of that, Ian and I did a whole video on this channel about how we thought that was really kind of above and beyond, you know, what we really need for, for vinyl, or at least setting a bad precedent for, for vinyl. And I feel like some of those, some of the albums that have come out over the last couple of years, like I said, Ghost, Red Hot Chili Peppers, when you're releasing, you know, 20, 30 different variants, I know, uh, the, uh, Life Forms, which was Angels and Airways last, uh, studio album, I want to say there was 25 plus variants of that album also. So I think like, yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, a lot of people get into to vinyl variants. I really love col colored vinyl and collecting different things, especially if it's an album I really love. But, you know, I feel like once you get above that uh, five, six, seven, eight different variants, it's kind of above and beyond at that point. Going back to the Taylor Swift album real quick, though, and I don't want to keep harping on, on her album Midnight's, but I will say that uh, on kind of a side note, it was incredible that I read in, uh, I think it was the LA Times, reported that in the very first day that the album was available she sold 500,000 copies of that album on vinyl which is absolutely unbelievable you know in 2022 that that many albums is being sold on in one on one day for one artist but i think that's kind of where you've seen a lot of the growth in vinyl record sales and i will say in cd sales i think also over the last couple of years is you're seeing younger and younger generations get into physical formats, which I think is a great thing. It's great for the longevity of the, the, these formats that we've loved for, you know, 40 plus years. And, uh, you know, like I said, the, cause that's where your, the growth is going to come from. That's where the longevity is going to come from to be completely honest. You know, over the next decade or so, a lot of us, you know, aren't going to be here to, to buy records anymore. So it's going to be the, the younger generations. I'm talking the, you know, 15 to 30 year olds that uh, are going to kind of carry this on. So that's why I said when you're seeing 
you know, 500,000 albums for Taylor Swift selling a day. Like I said, a lot of that's got to be that uh, under th- or under 30 year old group. Of course, I'm just speculating. I'm not really sure what the demographic of those those sales were. But like I said, I would assume it's, it's probably the, that 30 and under group at least makes a, a good chunk of that, which, like I said, is a great thing. Those are the people that are going to be buying, you know, records and CDs for the next, you know, 30, 40 years. But going back to, to vinyl variants or colored vinyl, you know, like I said, something I've loved for a long time. I, I will say that, uh, you know, I was kind of really kind of skeptical when I got back into to collecting vinyl. I don't know what it was, five, six years ago, whatever it was. You know, when I first started, it was, you know, I don't care about, you know, colored vinyl or, or you know, picture disc, which I still don't really care about picture disc. But, you know, when it, when it, it was, I looked at it and said, look, if, I, if I'm going to buy a record, I'm going to buy it on black. I grew up listening to black records. That's kind of what I've always been with. But when, when I see where once I started getting into these different variants, especially these really cool looking splatter vi- uh, variants, and, and uh, it, it really kind of adds a different element to, to record collecting, I think. One of the things I often hear from people that uh, collect records is they just, you know, they love holding that art in their hand. They love looking at the jacket. They love the the look of the record, the inner sleeves, everything. It's just the whole package of that record, you know, say compared to a CD, which, you know, still has some of that same, so those, some of those same qualities, but not to that same level. And obviously when you go to like, you know, an MP3 or a digital file, you lose all that, uh, the art that comes along with that. And I will say that there are bands out there or labels that have really kind of pushed the uh, the way the vinyl looks into that same realm also of it being, a, you know, uh, an art piece in and of itself. You know, one album in, in particular that uh, comes to my mind is, uh, this is uh, this is a reissue that just came out uh, within the last few months, an album by No Effects called uh, White Trash, Two Heaps and a Bean. I've got the standard black version of it. I would kind of toss around the idea of getting the anniversary release when it came out earlier this year. I'm glad I did because it's probably one of the best looking albums of my collection. And I don't even know, this isn't a splatter or what you want to call it, but just the overall look of this album is, I mean, that's got to be one of the best looking albums in my collection. I mean, it just looks absolutely sweet. And it's things like this that uh, have really kind of pushed me, you know, down the path of colored records and colored, you know, all these different color variants they're out there, especially when they look like this. But I also see the the opposite side of this argument, where I feel like in a lot of instances, especially with those Red Hot Chili Peppers albums I, that I mentioned earlier, you know, between those two albums, you know, there's over 50 variants of that of those two albums out there. And uh, a lot of those, I feel like it, it just seems like a cash grab to me when you have, you know, I think with, uh, with uh, their latest album, uh, Return of the Dream Canteen, I, there was like three different shades of purple or pink. I don't remember which one it was in particular, but you know, there's three shades of the same color kind of, and you know, it's things like that where, yeah, it's kind of cool to have, you know, different uh, options available if you're into to colored records, but it, things like that, that seem like, you know, you're just trying to push your record sales. You're just trying to get people to buy more of, of your albums. And that's kind of, like I said, that's the, 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 the downside of these variants, I think. I will say that uh, love it or hate it, <laughs> these uh, all these different variants aren't going anywhere anytime soon. They seem to be getting you know gaining more and more popularity. Like I said, you know Taylor Swift releases an album and sells five hundred thousand copies in a day. Uh, you know the next big artist is going to do the same thing. I think Harry Styles, which when uh, his album Harry's House came out earlier this year, there wasn't a whole lot of variants of that. I want to say there was maybe five or six different versions of that available. But uh, until Midnight's came out, I believe uh, that uh, that Harry Styles album was the number one vinyl or number one album for vinyl sales this year. So I guess I'll throw that out to you guys out there in the vinyl community. You know, when is it too much? You know, when, is it uh, six, seven, eight variants? Is that kind of too much for some people out there? It's two. You know, you could have one uh, one standard black and uh, you know one colored variant, and that's uh, and that's enough. Or there's other people out there that love getting the, you know, 10, 12, 15 different, you know, versions, which I can't imagine anyone out there is actually dropping that kind of money on an album. You know, I will say that at least with the Taylor Swift album, 
you know, it was 25 bucks a piece. So for a hundred bucks, you got all four of them, which isn't terrible considering that, uh, you know, the uh, Adele's latest album, I want to say it was like 42, $43 just for that one album. So, you know, I guess if people are, are keeping it cheap and, you know, making it affordable for, for people, I don't really have a big issue with these, uh, with all these different variants, but let me know what you guys think. Where's that line in the sand? You know, where, when is it too much or too many to, uh, variants for an album? But, uh, that's all I got for you today, guys. If you enjoy the show, make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. That's all I got until next time. Keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.